Look how long his middle finger is on the yeah, front. Yeah. But he does have stylish ripped jeans. <laughs> he does, yes. <laughs> Exposing like what looks like his bare like bone knees, like and elbows, yeah. Boys here, the internet's number one fake history podcast returns, only to be canceled by Netflix in favor of six seasons and two spin-offs of Big Mouth. I am a damp Muppet named Peter O'Donoghue, and controlling my mouth and right arm are uh, Ethan. I'm I'm the right hand man, <laughs> and I'm James. I'm uh, I, I'm just watching. This is a great show. <laughs> you fucking freak, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> on the side walking just like, <laughs> while I'm working Pete's right arm. God. And my yeah. mouth, right? Yeah. Have you ever seen uh, the, the Muppet puppeteer stance? It looks like it looks like it would give you like heart problems by having your arms raised and all the blood draining out of them for so long. Yeah. yeah. Actually, my shoulder is actually lower on my right side from all this watching I've been doing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, walk, not even moving his mouth. Pretty <laughs> So today, we're going to be doing the uh, Dark Crystal, thanks to the patrons Honest Dawn and Fragile Shark. Uh, they requested this quite some time ago. Uh, no non-patrons this time, so I think poor people just hate puppets. At least that's a conclusion I've come to. Um, and then also, hello to our newest patrons, uh, Ricotto and Max Schmidtman. So thank yeah. you guys very much for joining. Uh, hope you're in that's, the Discord. Hope we said hello already. But uh, That's a yeah. good crowd, Uh Honest Dawn and Fragile Shark. Those are some good, positive members of the community. I'm happy yeah. we're, we're paying Pillar. it back to them. Pillars of the community. Yep. Good memes, good people, server mm -hmm. boosters, all of it. It's all good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, Dark Crystal. Um, I know, like, Ethan, you mentioned it to me off air. <laughs> uh, what's your guys' familiarity with The Dark Crystal? Movie, show, co the comic? The movie Have once? you read the compendium for some reason? I've seen the movie once as an adult in like the last, maybe like four or five years ago. Um, don't remember a ton, but I do remember really liking it. I don't remember a ton of like the lore, I guess, or like the story per se. But uh, I'm excited to relearn some of it. I guess. Uh, I haven't watched it. A lot of the way that I've absorbed it is there's like a stint on uh the podcast Harmontown where they're talking about it a lot. And I, Aaron McGathy was talking about her sexual awakening as a child, uh, as like a young girl, and seeing David Bowie in The Dark Crystal. Apparently, That's labyrinth. Just, Oh, that's labyrinth. A that's a okay. different Dan I was like, Hansen you, production. You just yeah. made me stop. I was like, was David fucking Bowie in the movie? And I don't yeah, remember. No. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how much I know about what we're yeah, getting. No, he's, he's nothing. <laughs> oh, you know yeah. it's the Muppets. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know it's the Muppets. You know it makes people horny for some reason. But yeah, um, yeah no, there are no human characters in uh in the dark crystal film okay. nor in the television show. So uh, hopefully no sex hopefully no sexual awakenings too. Hey, somebody. <laughs> somebody out there is into, you know, lies of peace. <laughs> easily won <laughs> easily won <laughs> so uh, first, that. you're not hurting anybody no no you're diddling oh, puppets. you want to bang a gelfling for some reason go for it dude go they're, for it they're adults they live the same time no as, against as them. a human being yeah. the victim of crime <laughs> yeah. no you think ventriloquist with puppets <laughs> you think there's a ventriloquist who's into puppets and he like talks back and forth to himself like <laughs> <talk> <laughs> For, again, for at least one. The, like, the, 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 the guy who was here. sexually awakened by the Dark Crystal is that ventriloquist. <laughs> That's Talking out of the corner of his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so horny for you. Oh, yeah, me too. I am also horny. <laughs> <laughs> like, lying in bed by himself, like <laughs> sitting on his hand to get it to go numb. Yeah, I was, <laughs> like I was a ventriloquist say, like, stranger. You can't, you can't be a stranger because you need the, you know, you need the articulation on the puppet. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. yeah with man, so the curse, the ventriloquist curse. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they go crazy, right? It's They're a like mailman. Twilight Zone episode, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the plot for Lies of P, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hinted at in the demo that Geppetto's left hand is numb. Um, yeah. I, you should download that. <laughs> so first, we're going to touch on some real world stuff, and then the rest of the episode will just be all fake history, baby. So um, the Netflix show, um, 
if it's even able to be watched, because I know like some streaming services take shit down. And I barely check Netflix for anything anymore, except like maybe a stand up special once a year. I want to watch John Mulaney's. It looks good. Uh, it's supposed yeah. to be great. I watched an interview with yeah. him and he was talking about it, talking about uh, <laughs> going to rehab. Life cheater John Mulaney. Yeah, he just got out of rehab. He had like okay. a lot of issues. Yeah, yeah. but so he talks about it. My life. Like, I need to go to rehab. <laughs> he, lays it, he lays it all in the light. He talks about how he had to, to hide from his money guy that he was taking out money for drugs. He bought a Rolex from a Rolex store and went and pawned it. He used a credit card to buy a Rolex to pawn it just to get money. Like basically stealing from himself from and yourself. having the money and just to buy drugs. But. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I, but that's a, that's an addict brain. That's right? an addict brain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, if, if the Netflix show is still up, um, some of the puppeteers maybe were lying to their finance guys and like secretly buying puppet materials when then tr- pawning off the Muppets for cocaine. I have no <laughs> idea. I can't say that didn't happen. Um, now, I know, Ethan, you've seen the, the movie. Uh, I don't, I, I like the way it looks. I always found it, I've seen it twice now. I find it really hard to understand. Uh, a lot of the puppeteers are doing like a very like rah, 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 like monster voice. And a lot yeah. of the characters speak in broken English. No. So it's like, really it's a bizarre creative choice to have a like 100 fantasy film with no human characters so there is no audience pov and everybody speaks kind of like uh, in a broken english kind of goblin voice uh, the thing that maybe i was thinking of because of course uh i think you should leave season three is out you know the bit where the girl's been sewn into charlie brown's pants and she's like on the, dr- the dragon's den or whatever more. I haven't watched it. So. No, no, it's the older oh, one. From, from the older, from the, the yeah, older one. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I looked it up again. She she has like a clip where she's like, don't bring me a bad deal or else I'll rah, rah. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> that, that's what every single character in the fucking movie sounds like. I, okay. I, don't, I don't remember finding it particularly hard to understand the dialogue or follow. I don't know if you watched it like on low volume or something, but uh. I, I, I mean, again, I haven't seen it in a long time since the show came out in 2019. So it's been like four or five years. Uh, yeah. And I haven't seen the show at all. So I don't know if the show is like similar. Like the, they made the problem worse than the movie. Maybe. Oh, but maybe it's a problem for me, at least. It is a okay. completely understandable show. The dialogue is well written. Okay. All the characters speak proper English, not like, you know, were you, monster English. Were you watching? Like that, were you watching the monster version or the English dub? Oh, that's true. Eh? Yeah, subs are yeah. dubbed. Dude. Yeah, you should watch <laughs> yeah. Dark Crystal subbed. I guess that would probably be better. The English okay. voice actor they hired for the bird people is just bad. <laughs> All those puppet fetishists also subs. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a weird Venn diagram. Yeah. All um six inch sandwiches uh, subs. True. True. Yeah. True. 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 Um, Things with periscopes subs. Uh, subs. subs. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, open face sandwich with steak and Italian dressing on it. That's a great sub. That's my favorite sub. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Replacement teacher. Sub. Sub. Uh, sub. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sub. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, good move in. Good defensive move in Pokemon. Sub. Substitute. Sub. Oh, sub. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very good. Yeah. Very good defensive move. Uh, bus backwards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the most important one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the film was co-directed by Jim Henson, uh, father of the Muppets, and Frank Oz. Uh, Frank Oz was a name that I recognized personally. Uh, he's directed a ton of movies that I have never seen or heard of, but he was the voice and the puppeteer of Yoda in the uh, second Star Wars film from the 80s, uh, Return of the Jedi, I believe. Sure. No, which cool. is it? Oh, man, I'm going to piss someone off so hard. <laughs> it, <laughs> I'm, no, it's the Empire Strikes Back, for sure. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he, he was a puppeteer from Yoda in both, but Yoda dies in the in, in Return of the, the Jedi. Yeah. I've been considered... the Empire Strikes Back and then Return of the Jedi. I, I seriously thought about watching all those old Star Wars movies this week because I was playing the Star Wars game or whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't remember a single thing from all those old Star Wars. I just watch it so I can maybe keep up with these Star Wars fans. Yeah, that's like, I'm back on the Gigi G- 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 level. That's it. Radio, radio. Nice. I like. I mean, it, you can't understand what pod racing is otherwise. Because then you need to watch the prequel trilogy, right? I saw that. Yeah, that one I remember. I, I went to the theaters and watched that little Anakin guy do the pod racing with my dad. Yeah. yeah. He's the Gudger Banks. Yep. I feel so yep. bad for the actor who played that kid. Just relentlessly bullied till he went crazy. <laughs> oh, is that what happened? Yep. Yeah. 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 Went to the dark um, side. <laughs> <laughs> went to the dark crystal, am I right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, Frank Oz, uh, so he was, like I said, he was a puppeteer for Yoda. Uh, he also played Grover, Cookie Monster, and Bert on Sesame Street Whoa. from 1969 until 2007. I'm, I'm an Ernie man myself. I don't know about you yeah. guys. 
where you fall on the Bert and Ernie side of side of things. I don't. Which one's the sub in that relationship? Bert, Ernie, Bert. Uh, Bert's. Oh, two answers, two different answers. Come on, Bert's uh. like the he's like the abusive partner in that relationship, right? He's kind of mean and grumpy. Yeah, but he's the he's the uptight needs to blow off steam by being tied up and whipped. I think, right? Oh. I think. Ernie's like the 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 laissez faire, but but free spirit who has a lot of power in the bedroom. I think. Yeah. Okay. If I don't get a good paddling, I'll just go fucking crazy at work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, gee, Bert, I don't have the energy to tie you up today. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll put a poll. I'll put a poll on the Patreon, patreoncom slash boys and the patrons can weigh in on <laughs> who's the sub in that relationship. <laughs> oh yes. Speaking of that, we I wanted to check about um, timing for loser titles, but we can talk about it afterwards. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Um, sure. yeah. But another poll. Wow. Join the Patreon to participate in polls. In, in a little yeah. small D democracy, dude. It's great. West, yeah, West Coast feels like they're being left out of uh, the loser titles since we're doing a 5 p.m. Uh, EST. So <laughs> Should the Lord voice yeah. change the shape of the earth and change time zones, YN is going to be the poll. <laughs> Yep. So yeah, um, I just think I thought it was pretty crazy that Frank Oz was was on Sesame Street for that long, from 1969 to 2007. Like, I'm starting a new job. I hope I can get something 10 percent as reliable as being the Cookie Monster. <laughs> That's yeah. pretty fucking good. <laughs> um, Star Wars and American Graffiti producer Gary Kurtz was also on board for the Dark Crystal. So it's a very like the production values are fucking insane. But this is like a Hollywood royalty movie when it came out in 1982. Wow. I mean, Jim Henson was 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 big, right, at the time. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, of course. Throughout the 70s? It was, yeah, uh, like, it was pretty popular. he had a talk show where all the characters were puppets, where the puppets would interview real celebrities. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's how crazy the Muppet Show got. Wow. Yeah. And his shoulder is, like, higher on one side from all the time doing Big Bird, right? Yeah, they had to bury Jim him Hansen. in a longer coffin. Wow. To compensate for the... <laughs> the arm yeah. no, there's just like a hole in the top of the coffin and the hand a skeleton hand sticking out <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even know jim henson was dead that's how you have, that's how you actually kill a muppet you need to uh you need to retrieve the bone hand of jim henson and that's the only way to finally banish a muppet or else they get reincarnated oh yeah that's the ultimate stranger he <laughs> has been dead for 33 years holy moly really he died he before died. we were born died in 1990 yeah wow Fuck. Holy Jesus. Anyway, uh, so much of what we're going to talk about today, lore-wise, is from The World of the Dark Crystal by Brian Froud, as well as a fictional Oxford professor named J.J. Llewellyn, um, and then some more expanded universe stuff by a guy named J.M. Lee. Uh, J.M. Lee worked on the Netflix show as, like, the, you know, younger, more more modern historian. But The World yeah. of the Dark Crystal was a book made by Brian Froud, like I said, did a lot of the illustrations. Uh, this was made in conjunction with the film so this is all stuff from the 80s not like uh accepted expanded universe like jm lee did this shit was this is og um, yeah this is this is like the the concept book or whatever concept art book or yeah whatever. exactly um, when you say fictional oxford professor what do you mm. mean what the fuck are you there, it, about? i will explain how the universe in the dark crystal works earth is there and there is a oxford professor and dark crystal historian within the fiction Oh, beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> J.J. Llewellyn is a fake dude that like fake quotes are attributed to, basically. So like mm-hmm. uh he's the he's the guy quoted on the bottom of the magic card. Sure, is sure. Basically who JJ Llewellyn is, right? If he's, you, he's if you the author of the Lusty Argonian Maid or whatever. Precisely. Right? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. The real Baron's eye. I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so um every creature, uh planet and star within the dark crystal fiction exists within the universe. So this is uni hyphen verse, uh which is a hyphenated pun also known as the single song. Uh so existence mm. is again kind of like uh is a song. This is obviously taken from Lord of the Rings and maybe even ripped off from BioWare's phenomenal success Anthem, which featured an anthem of creation <laughs> as well. So Dark Crystal Anthem confirmed, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, uh, the universe itself is a song that that and that that just passes never by. ends. It goes on and on, my friend. My friend. <laughs> Some people thought it. Did. Do even do kids today even know the song that never ends? Probably not. No, I mean I think they took John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt out of the history books as well. <laughs> uh, so a lot of that stuff is being forgotten by the Zoomers, unless you had like you could just do that song on a TikTok with like whatever the running True. monkey video underneath. No, but that, that's the thing. TikToks are too short for the song that never ends because it, it goes on forever. But yeah. TikTok, you know, 
they're they're supposed to be short and sweet. So that's yeah. the problem. It's, well, it's a pretty good thing. looping song. I think it would work in a TikTok. It's a it's an attention span thing. Jamie, make mm-hmm. a TikTok and test it out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Earth exists within the single song, along with England. So I'm sorry about that. And this is where, like I said, the Oxford professor J.J. Llewellyn lives and works. Um, Earth is basically identical. However, at one point, a being from the planet uh, from the planet Thra named Agra arrived on Earth via astral projection and left some writing behind. Uh, this would eventually become the Book of Agra. And then Agra is one of the characters in both the Netflix show and film. She's one of the primary one of the primary characters. But she came imagine? to a fictionalized Earth and left writing behind that was then translated and like whatever adapted by J.J. Llewellyn. Sorry. Can you, can you imagine the audacity to be like, oh, I mastered astral projection. I'm just gonna fuck with another planet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna like pop up, pop over there, and just like invent religion for him. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like you've got a bunch of Muppets taught the Egyptians how to build the pyramids, basically. And uh-huh. it's that's what the like ancient aliens is just like, what if the Anunnaki and there's just like a felt alien in like painted onto a wall in ancient <laughs> Egypt or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so Thra is the planet on which the film and the Netflix series take place. It is the primary setting for the entire Dark Crystal universe. Uh, Thra was also created by the single song and is a planet orbiting three suns and ha- and allegedly at least has three moons. Um, the suns, or the three brothers, are the greater sun, rose sun, and dying sun. Uh, the greater sun appears to be a G-type main sequence star, like Earth's sun. Uh, the rose sun is a red dwarf, and the dying sun is a smaller dark star. When all three line up, it's called a greater conjunction, and due to their size and color differences, the three suns look like a giant eye. So you guys can open up the first spoiler image and see some of the fucking crazy hand-painted backgrounds that they have in the film. Extremely beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so if we're each a uh, one of the three suns, I think I'm Rose Sun. What, what are you two guys? I'll take I'm... greater sun because I'm hosting. Uh-oh, Jamie. Oh, I was going to say I'm, a, I'm probably the, the most mass. So I was going to take the greater You're sun. The dying, well, one of you has got to be the dying sun. I'm sorry to, to tell uh, you. But I, I guess I'll be the dying sun. I'll be a black hole one day. Yeah. <laughs> if Well, that could be, right? Because it's the the amount of mass is not necessarily relative to, to the, size. the size of the star, right? It's like what it's actually yeah. made out of. So maybe your gravity is just so strong that that's why you're the dying star. Yeah, I'm, I'm a tight little dying star. <laughs> so that's like speculation based on what kinds of stars there are uh, they are it's not actually official canon like lore boys astronomy i guess is just like yeah g type star that's the that's that one lore boys astronomy is just astrology the l is for lore boys <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys it's very cute the cat fell asleep on the dog's belly oh. and just has the ears back on oh yeah. man you're animals dude yeah she's got, she's got like the head up but like slowly bobbing side to side <laughs> <Yeah>. like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so due to having three sons a year on thrall is called a trine and it's roughly 365 days which is the time it takes thrall to orbit the greater sun which is how they measure time the <laughs> other two I guess they don't orbit in the same way. I'm not sure how a trinary star system would work as far as like having a planet orbit them and not, you know, be cooked to death by the rose sun or the dying sun. Don't know. But uh, anyway, it's called a trine and it's roughly the equivalent to a regular Earth year. Um, In the astrology, so the L is for lore boys, a trine represents harmony and is supposed to be beneficial. Um, I don't know much more about this this is real astrology sorry i should specify a trine is supposed to be like a beneficial thing i don't know like right like mercury rising or any of that i have a game called trine trine 2 i think i actually have it's like a wizard action rpg right it's a wizard and a platformer puzzly uh and then also with combat yeah 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 um another term for a trine uh in universe so this is fake astrology is an antep uh this word is taken directly from like the turkish and aramaic language it means springtime and for some reason is also a pistachio without its shell that's an antep really <laughs> in, in turkish yeah oh. yeah yeah it's antep fistig or fistigi is is a shelled pistachio in turkish aramaic wow <laughs> yeah don't know why anyway there's a trivia for the week um 
The jury is still seemingly a bit out on the three moon scenario. The primary blue moon and the smaller, weaker pearl moon are known to exist. However, both mythology and Agra state that there is a third hidden moon that no one has ever seen, uh, but it has four phases and obviously still affects like the tides and I guess like the mantle of Thra as well. Um, it's, a, it's like uh, if our moon turned around and we only ever saw the dark side, you just you wouldn't know it was there, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> of course, the the moon is notoriously two toned. <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing we're just do. we're just lucky we got the bright side pointing towards us. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> could have could have gone. I mean, just more proof that you know he is Lord. He is risen. Yep. He is. Right? Yep. <laughs> so, uh, more lore boys physics. Um, whatever the hidden moon, like obviously the hidden moon exists. Cause like Agra states it exists, and she is magic and can astral project. Lore boys physics. I would speculate that whatever material it's made out of does not reflect light very well, or at least visible like puppet spectrum light. It just cannot be seen due to that. It's not like the shiny mirror of cheese that we have. Uh, Yeah, yeah. It's nowhere near as reflective as mozzarella. Well, is it shiny or is it shining, Jamie? Now you're contradicting Uh, yourself here. Hmm? Yeah, that's you're you're right. I think it's shining. Um, Shining wheel of cheese. Yes. yes, shining wheel of cheese. Like the dark side of the moon is like the kind of waxy shit on the outside of brie. It's you just like peel that side <laughs> off. <laughs> the red wax of a baby bell. Yeah, like <laughs> pull the the string all the way around the back of the moon to get the yeah. cheese out. Of well, it. somebody had pulled the string, and you know how it, like, it half. half opens or whatever. Like, yeah. that's what happened. Yeah. 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 Did laughing um, cow? Is that the same one? Right, laughing cow and baby bell. That's the. I think Laughing Cow's wedges of cheese uh, and yeah. Baby Bell's circular. They're by the same company. I think Laughing yeah. Cow is the company. Yeah. I remember in elementary school, there was one kid who always had his like recess cheese. It was a very weird snack to give to a child. Like yeah. I had fruit and like some maybe like gummies or whatever, right? Like, you know, real fruit juice, gummies, like that bullshit. Just fucking corn syrup and sugar. Um, but yeah, there was one kid I remember always had because he, he would make a big fucking wad of the red wax and leave it on yeah. his desk until it was eventually thrown away. Yeah. And I just remember I, how weird that was. I would tell my dad, I don't like cheese and I don't like mayo on my sandwich. And those two things, you, you, I would always have a baby bell cheese and mayo on my sandwich. In the days of my dad packed my lunch, I just wouldn't eat my sandwich. No. <laughs> but I, the baby bell, I wouldn't eat. For some reason, I had a, a phase when I was young. I didn't like cheese very much. Um, but I would just... Dude, take the the wax and fuck around with the wax. I remember chewing on it as a kid too. The feeling of it between my two. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm I don't have a lunch, but my dad's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just very self absorbed. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. not a good listener. No, right? no, definitely. I not. think some parents are just like that. It took my mom so fucking long to realize that I was lactose intolerant for like ten years straight. That now that the problem is gone. Yeah. she's still now is just like oh sorry i put butter in this i'm like honestly it took you so long to remember that this was a fucking problem the problem's You're gone now so yeah. It, 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 yeah. Yeah, now you now you remember of course yeah. right yeah uh, my dad just some things too yeah i remember when i first got ice like 10 years ago i told him oh if you buy food i'm trying to use grain-free food because at the time that's what i thought a husky needed in the end it's fine to have grains but to this day, he's coming to see me tomorrow. He's like, I got grain free food from Costco. And oh, like, oh, yeah. it hasn't been a thing for years, but okay. Thank yeah. you, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my mom, throughout my whole journey of becoming vegetarian, it's just like every step of the way, like, you're, you're what? You're not, you're not you don't eat pork? Like, mom, I gave up <laughs> four years ago. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't touched it since. I don't know what to tell you. As a good old Bob <laughs> Miller story <laughs> there, I would have assumed. Your dad was just like, oh, I bought some, uh, I, I I bought some like cereal for your dog, like the complete opposite of just like the grain free yeah. thing. Yeah, oh, I got her, I got her mixed, uh, the the mixed up Cheerios, the multi grain ones. Those are yeah. great. <laughs> he doesn't like cats, and I got a cat recently, and he's like, I told him about it. He's like, what? I thought you didn't like cats. I'm like, yeah. I, I like cats. You don't like cats. <laughs> <laughs> and he bought a bunch of stuff at Costco for my dog, but didn't buy anything for the cat because he likes the, the dog. But not-, not even a little bell ball, a dollarama. What a monster. <laughs> my God. Anyway, uh, on every planet within the single song, uh, every planet with life, that is, that we know of, there's also a giant sentient great crystal. Uh, these are the sources of all the life on the respective planets and are also linked to one another uh, through time and space through some magical force. Um, I do not know if there are like 
great crystals on planets without life. Like if there's just one that's on Jupiter, just desperately struggling to create life where there is no land and yeah. too much gravity, <laughs> just, like, just like constantly, just like just seeing what sticks basically. Yeah. But uh, on every on every planet with life, there is a great crystal. There must be one on the single songs version of Earth as Earth. well. That of course, you know, creates Oxford professors like J.J. Llewellyn. Mm -hmm. the, the, all the uh, healers were right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they take an oxford class of like the bull singing just like with chris yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what Stuffy old british guys how does jm lee fit into everything he's, he's a real a man who created expanded universe fiction oh okay yeah he's, he's a real person i think yeah. of uh, my initials are jm and jm lee it could be like an adjective for 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 being like jm jm lee oh like jm lee -Y? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. It's L E E. It's just an Asian okay. surname. <laughs> okay, got it. Got it. Yeah, I do, do something very JM Lee these days. You yes, know? that's exactly Sleep it. Sleep on yeah. top of my fucking glasses is very JM. Lee. <laughs> I my glasses have been falling off this whole time. Like I, <laughs> I destroyed. need to repair them after this. So. I have a tiny screwdriver set. When we build your PC in eight months, we can also fix your fucking glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <clears throat> You, you now, could just buy yourself like a Pence Nez attachment for him, Jimbo. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be good on you, I think. You I think. Off. Yeah. Well, what happened to Google Glass? That thing fizzled out. I want some cool AR uh, goggles, man. Just get the five thousand uh, dollar Apple helmet, so you can yeah. see your eye messages what, like in front of you oh, while yeah, you're Apple, driving. Apple scuba mask. He yeah. has a yeah. similar prescription to me, but just never wears glasses. You just live in a blurry world, my man. It's crazy to me. I just need them for driving. There's no way I'm as blind as you are. I function. I don't even wear them anymore unless I'm going somewhere I don't know. But like I they're just there. They're huh. not even on my license. I don't even require them legally. Really? Yeah. I'm only like a point two five off from a normal uh, normal eye. Normal man. Yep. Is that a lot? Not very um, much. Is, I have a very weak prescription. Yeah. I'm a lore doctor, not an eye doctor. Hmm. So, uh, while Thra is obviously spherical, like every planet, fake scholar J.J. Llewellyn from fake school Oxford speculated that perhaps the planet was triangular based on his readings from texts left behind by Agra. So she really did just astral project onto Earth and start fucking with people. Like, just straight up, oh, our planet is a pyramid. Build pyramids on yours. Like <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, on Thra, there was a stupider than the British race called the Firelings, who literally lived underground, and they speculate that the that Thra is actually flat. So they do have flat huh. Earthers, but they're the people who have never seen the fucking sun and like live in the planet's basement. Naturally, naturally, right. Um, so the crystal within Thra became known as the Crystal of Truth. Originally, it's like formed within a mountain, basically. Okay. Um, and uh, where am I here? Uh, and it also created all sentient life on the planet. Uh, Plot-wise, the most important species were the Gelflings and the Podlings. And, like, that's kind of historically specific. Um, all sentient life there was contain contained within an essence, which is the analog to the soul. It's, like, mm. sucked out of... It's, like, the evil plot of the show is to suck essence out of um, other sentient races to, it, like, um, extend their lives, basically, the villains who we'll get into. Uh, sentient racists? Yes, uh, they're yeah, becoming no, no, sentient. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're drain the essence out of them. <laughs> extend our lives. <laughs> That's the only way to be anti-racist is to extend is to uh, drain the eternal youth out of clan members. Exactly. <laughs> Nazi punks, fuck off. Yep. <laughs> Give me your essence. <laughs> um, the protagonist species of on Thra are end of the series are the Gelflings. They're the they're the like not quite humans. They're like elves. So you guys can open up the next little picture and describe them. I find them very weird looking personally, but yeah. Yeah, they're, they're definitely weird looking. They got um like uh doe like faces, I'd say. Like they kind of look like uh the no like the nose shape kind of looks like a, a deer with the, the lips underneath, I find. Yeah. I, um, I feel like ears. I feel like you know in Mario sixty four when you can like drag the face around in the opening yeah. screen. If oh, they yeah. grab if they grab like the nose <laughs> slash top lip area and yeah. kind of just brought it down a little bit. The, the filtrum pulled that. Yeah, I, I see yeah. That no. Yeah. So they're a uh, sexually dimorphic species. The men are much larger and heavier, while the women in their adulthood develop butterfly like wings, which can allow them to fly and glide. Personally, I would take the wings. That sounds way cooler than every, being a little every taller. Time. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. If I had to be a girl puppet, I would do it. Give me the wings. No questions. Mm-hmm. Um, where was I? Uh, both races. <laughs> every what? fucking time I look at you and your glasses get all just, fucked up. They're all more fucked up every time. <laughs> I'm just trying so to get through this, guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So both races, this is the Podlings and the Gelflings, lived primarily on the continent of Scarith, along with uh, a psychic hive of spiders called the Arathim. Uh, who, when uh, kind of collectivizing their consciousness, uh, become a super organism called the Ascendancy. Uh, it's in the show. It's kind of evil um, and is probably the only full CG character in the entire Netflix series. The Netflix series is a lot of practical effects. And again, I think every single character other than the Ascendancy uh, is an actual practical puppet operated by multiple, like a puppeteer or multiple puppeteers in some cases. Uh, in this instance, obviously, the, you know, giant skull face made of a hundred talking spiders was not practical. Um, but that's probably just for, like, budget reasons, you know. They were just too fucking lazy, I think, personally. I blame the artists. Yep. <laughs> and in no way, Netflix, who canceled the show after <laughs> dumping a bunch of fucking money into it. No, 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 no. It's never the, it's never the manager's fault or the producer's fault, right? It's it was the goddamn bohemians. It's yeah. those lazy union loving puppeteers yeah right the writers guild's on strike the puppeteer guild is going out with them at some point and now it's just we're gonna have a bunch of ai generated puppet shows and that's the only (laughs) thing that's gonna be on fucking netflix (laughs) (laughs) so um the gelfling along with the other races were created by the crystal of truth during the age of innocence um after conflict arose between flora and fauna the crystal created agra to serve as its eyes and ears so she is um Again, like one of the more powerful magical beings. You can pull up her picture. She's the next one. She's uh, kind of shockingly ugly for a character. Very gobby Lynn. But, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. She's got uh, curved curved ram's horns. Oh, uh, it's like, this is like kind of the, the opposite of the Mario, like stretch out. It's like if somebody had grabbed her like right in the nose in the middle of her face and just like just drew like everything shot. in, you know? Like, yeah. And like yeah. pug, <laughs> yeah, she probably like, yes. snores. Pug, like, yeah. yeah, she probably snores. Uh, she's got gray hair. She's got like the this draping cloth. I don't even know what material that is. It's like a bunch of different colors. It looks like she just like scrabbled together a bunch of different shirts to make a shirt. Yeah, yeah. A lot, very very witch vibes, right? Like, yeah, she looks like yeah. She's a good witch though. She has and a medallion. Good. Yeah, and she was created. She also has a power of astral projection. She's very powerful. She created multiple races on Thra as well. She has that power as a direct like representative of the crystal itself. Because the Gelfling and the other sentient races were just getting, I don't know, getting too way into like into deforestation and shit. So she was like, "Hey, whoa, hey, we all got to chill." She made a she made multiple races, so she made racism happen. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I guess by C- CEO of racism. <laughs> yes mm-hmm. um god what was i gonna say oh it doesn't matter oh yeah she's one of the um main candidates for broken english monster voice in the film i find her particularly hard to understand ethan stop taking screenshots of me <laughs> are you doing a time lapse of his glasses falling off yeah. <laughs> Um, do we know any of the races that she made or are we going to talk about that at all or uh yeah we're going to talk and talk about like her first creation is very important to the story okay cool um but i mean i believe she created the little kind of like fuzzy ball dog things as well (laughs) the 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 there's one muppet in the movie that's just like a bunch of sharp teeth in like a puff ball and it's the you know it's a surrogate dog it's the cute character for the movie yeah uh, but yeah, there's one there's one being she creates specifically who we'll talk about later. So yeah, like I said, Agra of My Fair Lady, basically the Gelflings and the Podlings, teaching them to live with nature instead of fighting against it. And then these um, sentient races would then create multiple tribes uh, with various kind of themes. So in the show, you can see like the forest tribe Gelflings. Then like the Kingsguard are all Gelflings as well, the more militaristic. There's another tribe where there's like a princess character and her mother lives in like kind of a small village with a crystal tower, like a smaller like fiefdom sort of thing. So you get to see all the different like branches of Gelfling culture within the show. Cool. Um, we'll get into some more eras and some the way things have kind of shaped up uh, going forward just after the break. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, so this period of uh, Agra civilizing the sentient races on Thra is known as the Age of Innocence, so-called because the Gelfling still really had no concept of time, death, or like pornography or anything like that. 
This lasted roughly a thousand trine, so roughly a thousand Earth years. Mm -hmm. uh, the Age of Harmony, which followed, is known to take place during Thra's second millennium, and for whatever reason, the way they count this time period is 999 plus one trine, which is still a thousand years, but fantasy calendar for some fucking reason. A millennia. Yeah. Like a lot of fiction, there is a golden age. Uh, during this time, the Gelflings made contact with the Podlings and also the Grunak. Uh, if you guys want to pull up the next picture, you can see what a Podling looks like. It's oh, actually a Millennium would be one, right? A millennium. Uh, millennium is one, yeah, a Millennium one, is one. One 1,000 years, yeah. 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 Millennia is multiple. One 1,000, two 1,000. Oh my god. A Millennium is one Mississippi. So what is like data, data. Is this, okay, are we looking at the Jigsaw yes. from Saw Pig? Like, uh, <laughs> no, you may have skipped ahead to look at what a Grunak looks like as well. The Podling is the cute little guy with the wooden spoon. Oh, okay, that's at the end for me. Yeah. I don't. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't even. I don't even see a guy with a wooden spoon. Where's the, the, last oh, he's, he's the very last one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pete's all out of order here. For fuck's sake, the, I put them in this order, dude. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> um, they're like kind of cute little. They're much goofier looking little gnome dudes. This character yeah, looks like an old frog. Is, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Like a tired old frog. Yeah. Uh, this character is specifically named Hup, and he wants to be a knight, but doesn't have a sword, so he fights with a wooden spoon. Oh, I like yeah. him. Um, the Grunak picture, this is the only picture we have of them. The Grunak picture have their mouths sewn shut. Um, their technological prowess and ability to build advanced technology made them a target of another race later on. Uh, they were thought to be hunted to extinction. However, two remain enslaved in the Chamber of Life, which is where the crystal is currently housed at the time of the show. Um, so now we need to move a little, change our setting a bit. On a very distant, unnamed planet, there lived another race called the Urskek. So if you guys want to pull up, uh, now I don't know what fucking order they're in, you <laughs> should need to pull up a very, uh, kind of mad scientist looking white thing. Yeah, that, yeah, that's picture four. Yeah. Let's see. It. Okay, yeah. Uh, very Doc Brown from Back to the Future, if he was an alien. Yeah. Yeah, and his hair was standing straight up. Well, Doc Brown from Back to the Future's hair did kind of do that. Uh, right? I guess so. Well, even straighter upper. Even straighter up. Yeah, not yeah, like, it's like straight like, off the head, but yeah. like like Mark Simpson to, in this to the Venus, right? Like straight yeah. straight up. He's very thin and like gaunt. It also looks kind of like um like uh mushrooms, the hair. Like it's clearly like just like a yeah. lot of gel and whatever like fiber that is for the puppet, but it does make give it like this like mushroom appeal to it or fungal. <laughs> yeah, the like the uh, subterranean fungus web. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It also could have been like a mop that they just left Elmer's glue in overnight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then let like dangle. This guy does yeah. look like a mop who sleeps like a like a vampire bat. You know, he looks upside down now that you mentioned <laughs> yeah, he it. He looks yeah. upside down. <laughs> He's got his arms crossed too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> He definitely yeah. does look upside down. Have you seen Dad, the, what's a Muppet? <laughs> yeah. Have you seen uh, someone took a video of like bats, uh, but they're all upside down, but they filmed it as if they're right side up. Yeah. And it, it just like looks dancing. like, yeah, it looks like they're at, like a goth nightclub. Yeah. yeah. It's very cool. <laughs> they are very cute. Yeah. So yeah, this is an Urskek. Uh, these are tall, slim beings that glow with an internal light and possess multiple telekinetic powers. Uh, they can levitate. They can move things with their minds, raise the dead, apparently, and Whoa. also give life to non-living entities. In the Netflix show, there's a big rock golem named Lore at one point, and I oh, believe he was given them life. They us? They, they uh, did. They knew oh. we would do this episode eventually. Thanks, Jim Henson. You yeah. never even got to get alive. You, know, you died before any of us were were born, but you planned for it, right? This dead is barely raised at all. He has so much hair on his head. <laughs> what? He hasn't been raised. Raised. Oh, my God. Yeah. Boo. Very good. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so they give life to a giant rock golem named Lore. I, I believe, at cool. least, it's a little bit of Lore Boys canon. I, I didn't rewatch the show. The Urskek perceive time and the universe as triangular uh representing active passive and neutral creation preservation and destruction and then god the cosmic and the individual so jj oh. llewellyn over at oxford speculating that thra was triangular was like maybe getting mixed up with like the philosophy of it and uh of like the understanding of the universe as being triangular and not like a literal interpretation of just like well they talk about triangles constantly yeah. so 
and they those hierarchy of needs you know you've got you've got your base needs you know you've got your social needs you've got your telekinetic needs you've got your yeah. you know. cosmic needs yeah. <laughs> you know what my favorite part of the hierarchy uh is that sex is in there with food and shelter they, they put yeah, that right in there love to fuck yeah, dude there's yeah. a little bit of philosopher or psychologist lore for you yeah, so if you're not fucking, then you can't even get to the next level of self actualization. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, virgins. <It's> <laughs> yeah, virgins. You might as well stop eating because that's the same. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, Maslow said it, not me. You know. Yeah, yeah fair enough. I'm just yeah. quoting. I'm just quoting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so politically, to quote Maslow, virgins might as well stop eating. <laughs> I remember being surprised that sex was like on the same level of food, like when they taught that to us. I thought it would be like the next one up because you can technically live without sex, but I guess I think plenty of people do. I I yeah. think it's wrong. I think there's plenty of things wrong with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, yeah. right? Like, yeah. It was written by a guy who loved doing cocaine in like the 18 or 1900s. So like, well, yeah, take it for what it's worth. <laughs> It's Mas- Maslow didn't. Oh, I don't know. Actually, Everybody was doing know. cocaine in those days, man. It was uh, the yeah. old medicine. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's like over the counter for like toothaches. For yeah. I would, I would the prescription love for for periods for women was like heroin and vibrators like, <laughs> of medicine. The next that's time I get a cold, like someone find that old timey cold right? medicine because that sounds like a great way to just like the take meth, your sick day meth, heroin cocaine like <laughs> yeah. to give the children yeah i i think i feel better i don't feel <laughs> sick anymore yeah, yeah. 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 a quick uh, quick thing about the maslow's hierarchy of needs in high school there was a kid who would always for some, like a very weird kid would always tell us that because sex was higher up in the pyramid he's like if you jack off when you're hungry your hunger pains go away and i was like what are you <laughs> talking about man? No, but sex is on the bottom level though it's yeah sex is, sex is uh he was talking about maslow's inverted funnel of needs uh, okay <laughs> yeah. Dude, the amount of times i've had to look at that damn triangle like all the way through school and then now in hr trainings they show yeah. them to uh oh really yeah. yeah i've never been the McGill, the... the mcgill training we did they oh were, okay were... yeah yeah because i've done hr ones in office and i've never been shown the triangle of just like, no this is management yeah. stuff yeah showing up on time and then you know uh yeah. you know your kpis and then at sex, obviously, and yeah. Yeah, the psychic needs of, of HR, basically. Yeah. But the ones that I'm That's looking at now don't even have sex on it. So maybe since I did my my university degree, like what's getting close to 10 years ago, they might have taken it off. Oh, no, here, this one has sex. OK, yeah, good. People don't need sex. Nobody goes crazy because they don't have sex. Obviously, we can just take it off the triangle, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, politically. <laughs> Getting back to the Erskek here. Politically, the Erskek society was rigidly collectivist. And like any good collectivist society, they considered any and all deviation from whatever the current consensus was to be heresy. So they have the same kind of cracks in their, in their socialism that real life does, uh, where it's just like, ah, you just can't control for people. Or in this case, upside down bat puppets or whatever the fuck we were talking <laughs> about. You just can't factor in the free will of the bat puppets. Right. 18 of these Erskek began using their planet's great crystal to experiment with the dual concept of good and evil, speculating that some that there's like some heretical two-sided uh philosophy out there. So they were very much looking into whatever the equivalent on their planet of like a yin and a yang opposed to the triangular, you know, yin yang yang whatever you want to fucking call it, whichever vowel you want to put in there for the second sure. one. Right. Uh naturally these 18 heretics were banished from their planet, arriving probably centuries later on Thra during the Golden Age of Harmony. Uh, before their banishment, they were all told that if and when they can come, they can overcome their evil side, uh, they're welcome back to their home planet. So it was a very, it was a very temporary thing. It's like, sit down on this other planet, figure out what you did, and then you guys can come home whenever you want. They don't seem to age, so it could take them a thousand trying. It could take them ten whenever. They were welcome home when they, you know, resolved their, their personality issues. Uh, the 18 arrived on Thra through the Great Crystal, like in Beams of Light, during the first Great Conjunction. So all three suns had aligned. 
Agra was present at the time and was horrifically burned by the energy given off by the arrival of the Erskek, as well as the energy from the three suns being lined up. Um, the Erskek managed to heal her, at, you know, just as ugly as she ever was. She looks uh, great. Okay, I was going to say, is like that what happened to her face? Or? Uh, no, no, no. Nope. <laughs> no. Yeah. no. Um, like, <laughs> she got like horribly burned. And she's got like, I don't know, like Angelina Jolie's face or something like some, you know, uh, some supermodel's face after the burning. And everyone's like, oh, God, fix her. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, she's like wrapped up in a hospital bed. It's just like Margot Robbie with a bunch of like creepy Muppets. Just like, I can't believe we've done this. We need to we need to change her back. (laughs) (laughs) The most beautiful woman alive. Uh, But yeah, they did use their magical powers to heal her and restore her back to health and just kind of explain what had been going on. What does Margot Robbie look like? What? She's Barbie. Oh, I know her. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, like made in a lab levels of gorgeous and also yeah, apparently beautiful. a cool person. So like that's also that's the, the two best things a Hollywood actor could have. Is she the Harley Quinn, too? Yeah. Oh, yes, that's true. Yes. Oh, wow. I mean, a few things. I, for the longest time, thought she was uh, the girl from My Name is Earl, but a different person. Oh, I can see. I see what you mean now. Mm. For, for okay. the longest time, I was like, how does this how does this woman still look? 25 years old when she's like oh, I, like my name is Earl was a sitcom in like the early 2000s yeah <laughs> like, I would be 20 years older and doesn't look a day older but it's just a different person who looks very similar yeah some oh people God. age well and just like get really good work done like friends was on in what 1999 Jennifer Aniston still looks fucking great some, I feel like she has more 55 some okay. some people do uh age really well and get work done and then some people are different people than you the one yeah. the one you were thinking of so. from, from this picture doesn't it look like she has more teeth than the average human she's got too many teeth why they're, did you, god they're, god they're, had to give her some flaw so he gave her too many teeth <laughs> <laughs> the, the, but perfectly straight yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i still think she's pretty i, I, I do too because they got all them teeth but no toothbrush <laughs> That's a Twilight Zone episode as well. Marco <laughs> Robbie can't brush her teeth. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, where was I here? Right, um, so uh, the Erskek at this time had no intention of causing any harm to Agra, which is why they healed her immediately and began to um, help her. They also helped um, kind of like make Thra a more prosperous planet because just because they were imprisoned or banished there, they didn't, they, they didn't have any ill will towards the, the population on the new planet. They sang at the mountain. They used, like, the magical song, basically. They sang at the mountain containing the great crystal. It crumbled away, and then they reformed a giant crystal castle around it. Uh, this is now known as the <laughs> the castle of the crystal. Crystal and castle. The crystal castle. Crystal castle. That's a it's band. In, Cr- crystal castles. They do They turned it into a big skull full of vodka, right? <laughs> yeah. The uh-huh. Dan, and then there's Dan just Akers the crystal vodka. at the inside. <laughs> Dan Aykroyd's shitty vodka. I've never had it, but my sister has a tiny little, a tiny like airplane sized skull that she has. We're like the, the like bottle, a hotel the one. bottle is great. It's a great bottle. Yeah, the vodka, the vodka is mid at best. I'm not a yeah. fan of vodka. I don't I'm think I like it, no matter what. It's just one of those ones that that people probably buy as a gift, and then it sits on your because it looks cool. It sits well, on cool your... empty bottles, a cool empty bottle, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know there's a video on YouTube of a guy trying to chug Patron out of a skull shaped bottle, and. uh he gets very sick very quickly. It's a very good yeah. video. I've only ever had one kind of Patron. I think it was at Ethan's place. It was like a chocolate one or something. No, it's a coffee one. Coffee one. That sounds really I have nice. come over. I think I have three bottles of Patron Gold. So wow. Just because right. when I moved into my house, uh, I guess my dad told everybody that I drink tequila, which I do drink tequila. Mm-hmm. And everybody was like, here you go. I got like three separate gifts. Of Patron, <laughs> Patron Gold. I was like, all right. Nice. I remember I drinking never, that I never coffee one. It was good on, shit. So I just have yeah. like three bottles in there. The coffee one on ice was, was excellent. Yeah. Was yeah. Patron Cafe on ice is so good. Mm-hmm. Really, really nice. Um, so the Crystal Castle now has the, uh, this is the Crystal of Truth. I don't remember if I mentioned. The Crystal on Thra is known as a Crystal of Truth. Uh, the castle would eventually become the seat of power where the rulers of Thra would work out of. Um, with the help of the Grunek, the Erskek began uh, building a series of mirrors around the Great Crystal within the castle now to more rapidly harness the power of the Three Suns and try and create like a fake conjunction so that they could go home earlier. 
the, basically. Sorry, the, Grunek, the Grunek are the birds, right? Uh, the no, the Grunek are the uh, guys with their mouths sewn shut in the picture. Oh, sorry, sorry. They're yeah. the technology guys. I told you right, I okay. briefly. Oh. They, yeah, they're good with so technology. Erskek, the mops, came to the planet, enslaved the, the Grunek. At their- present, they're working with them. They're just like, we need somebody okay. to build us a series of mirrors to try and create a fake conjunction. We don't want to wait for the next solar eclipse, guys. Gotcha. We need some fucking right. mirrors. Let's go. We will use our magical powers to make the planet better, but you need to help us get the fuck out of here. Is, gotcha. is basically, it. They're, right. they're being taken advantage of. Sadly, when the time was right, Agra's son, Raunip, began to mock and tease the Urskek, uh, specifically one nicknamed Darkheart. So this is... Uh, a, Runip, who I don't have a picture of, I couldn't find one, is the first sentient being that Augur created herself with the power of the crystal. And she uh, kind of adopted him as her son. But um, where where is it here? Um, right. Uh, real life author, excuse me, real life author Brian Froud, who created the world of the Dark Crystal that we talked about uh, in the 80s, uh, considered Roundup to be like this universe's equivalent of a trickster character. He was a mischievous little creation that would, yeah. He would do some plan exactly, but like not as destructive and evil as Loki. M- much more of a like a good natured prankster sort of thing, hey, opposed to a I'll say. yeah. Did you find a picture of him? Like I couldn't like, find one. Not like uh, not a puppet, but I got some pictures of him from an art book somewhere. It's probably so. the world of the Dark Crystal because Brian Froud did the writing and the illustration for the for the book. There you go. Oh right. yeah, okay. I did see this. Jesus Christ, he looks terrible. Yeah, look, kind of like, look how long his middle finger is on the yeah, front. Yeah. But he does have stylish ripped jeans. <laughs> he does, yes. <laughs> Exposing <laughs> like what looks like his bare, like bone knees, like and yeah. elbows, yeah. Oh I'm my. just saying this guy could uh use a little bit of being burned alive to look like Margot Robbie, I think. I think <laughs> he, he could probably stand to stand to get a little bit of beauty work done. This is like, well, day three of playing Zelda. I haven't left my room in, a f- in many hours. And then yeah, someone, right. sn- and then Ethan snaps a screenshot of me as I walk by my computer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you just look like a chimney sweeping brush wearing ripped pants. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the wildlife cam catching you watch, walk into the kitchen at 4 a.m. after playing World of Warcraft for 18 hours straight. Yeah, right? yeah. Got to go load up on Pogos. Pogos is yeah. Yeah. Pogos and gamer juice. Yeah. Now's the time to admit that, like, it, it, Jamie's been saving uh, uh, our Patreon money for a new PC, whereas Ethan and I immediately bought a trail cam and set them up in, in Jamie's. <laughs> 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 we those are like, <laughs> like the reflective eyes just in his yeah. underpants with, like, <laughs> Pogos in his fingers, like Wolverine claws. Yeah. <laughs> if any one of us three was a cryptid, it would be Jamie. I, I think Absolutely. The, yeah, my hold short that I showed you guys the other day that I still yeah. wear around the apartment. Your whole yeah. shorts, dude, that's just an elastic waistband with some material hanging off one of the legs. Because one of them is okay. ripped all the way through to your ass. Yeah, <laughs> it's a huge crotch hole and the waistband is ripped like on one half from the from the shorts. Yeah. And it's uh, yeah. it's, it's like comfy. half skirt, half shorts. But They're like comfy. on the side, it's it's not like it's not like an actual like yeah, all, all <laughs> fucking basketball shorts or gym shorts are comfy. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. All fucking basketball shorts right now. If you buy a new pair, they won't be uncomfortable just because they don't have they don't have all those fucking holes in them. Like, yeah, I mean, uh, it's better ventilation. I'll give them that. Real one, real chilly thigh as it's ripped apart. There, yeah. he went to go. So, get I went to go look for them. I don't know where they are right now. So never mind. Yeah. <laughs> You just like that's what you put up on the Patreon when you put up a poll at patreon.com slash the little It's like help d- does Jamie need new basketball shorts? Yes, no. Just like yeah. completely destroy rags. <laughs> or that could be the top p- tier. Uh if you pay ninety nine a month, you can get a well marinated um pair of oh, shorts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants oh, that. <laughs> Do not subscribe to that tier, you will not be getting the shorts. No. <laughs> <laughs> so um Where's the where's the name here? Uh, yeah, Roundup's roast of Darkheart kind of distracted the Erskek during the ritual that they were trying to do to initiate a conjunction, and it kind of set them off balance spiritually and 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 really kind of confused them. They were they had been whatever prepared to heal their like their the yin and the yang there, but then it it didn't work. So the attempt to use the Great Crystal physically spit them uh, split them into two new races, one pure evil and one pure good, called the Skeksis and the Ura specifically. Time okay. to get tactical marines. Skeksis are bad? 
Skeksis are bad. Now you guys can open the picture. Those are the birds. Those are the the, Skek- the Skeksis are very, exactly, uh, vulture-like, bipedal um, creatures, and they're, they're all hunchbacked. And because they're the evil guys, they're very opulent and very decorated. Their, their hunchback is usually, like, adorned with a lot of jewelry, and they have, like, beak jewelry, and their horrible bird hands have a bunch of rings and, and whatnot on them. Ooh. Uh, the Ura you can bring up as well are kind of more of a... Again, they look a lot like the Gelflings, but they're much more calm yeah, think... and monk-like. Monkish, I think I said uh, one time. Yeah. Monkish is probably still weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're out of pictures. What are they called? Ura? Uh, the Ura, yeah. Or the Mystics is the casual name. So Dark Crystal Mystics, you can see uh, what they look like. I, I guess I forgot to post that one. Missed that. I have one on my PC. Anyway. Um, this event ended the Age of Harmony and started the Age of Division, uh, much to the annoyance of like podling calendar makers everywhere. The Ura, like I said, are called the Mystics in the movie and the show. If one of them dies, their exact opposite, their half, the Skeksis, also dies. Also, their wounds copy over because they're two halves of the same being. Every single one of them is a pair. So now we have 36. Um, we see this actually in the movie when the emperor of the Skeksis dies at the beginning. He like dissolves into dirty gray ash. The mystic that is hanging out with the main Gelfling character, Jen, also dies, I believe, because they were two halves of the same being. Oh, Go I ahead. understand. Okay. Yeah. They kind of fade away because they're good guys. They don't turn into like dirty ash where it's like, wow, this 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 monk creature that raised me, I need to just like sweep it out of the hut that I've been living in. Like, it, I think he disappears into like sparkles or starlight or something and just vanishes. Uh, but the sexes like, are much, much grosser. It's like matter and antimatter. What if they got too close to each other? Would they cancel each other out? Ah, ah, we'll get to that actually. Okay. All right. That's a major plot point. <laughs> All right. I, I'm starting uh, to figure this out. There was a lot of panic. You could have written the dark crystal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> So uh, there was a lot of panic and confusion during the division, like being physically split in half and having your good and evil sides form into new creatures has got to be quite shocking, um, leading to the accidental deaths of two of the Skeksis and two of the Ura right away. So they're down from the original 18. Now they're down to the 16 that have been split into 32. Um, but still, like it, during the progress, uh, where was I? Sorry, I skipped ahead here. Right, uh, so Agra tried to reason with the Skeksis at one point, but in the panic, they attacked her. One of them missed and actually chipped off a shard of the Crystal of Truth, which would start an event that is the kind of overarching bad thing going on in the, sh- in the series and in the movie. This is called the Darkening. So chipping off a piece of the Crystal is what starts its transformation into the titular Dark, Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance. Ah. Uh, the crystal shard would eventually be given to Jen, uh, a Gelfling, and his companion Kira. Uh, they repair and cleanse the crystal at the end of the film. Uh, Jen is the male in the picture of the Gelfling, actually the taller one with the dark hair. Okay. Uh, things calmed down a little bit after the division. The Ura all left the castle to kind of become hermits or monks. They're very, they're very calm. They walk very slowly. Like they're seen moving around in the movies. They're like at their own pace. Man. Very much like I guess the Muppet reference. The uh, Snuffleupagus, the elephant that right. Big Bird hangs out with on Sesame Street. Yep. They move a lot like that. Very deliberate. Very calm. I mean, they're eternal. Got nowhere to be. Certainly not fast, right? Right. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe my other half is the emperor of the evil bird people, and he gets assassinated. Maybe I'll just randomly die one day. I don't yeah. fucking know. I'll never, I'll, never scary. Yeah, I'll, I'll never see it coming. I'll never see it coming. Could you fucking imagine? <laughs> <laughs> what if we do have another, like, on the other side of the world? We just don't even know it. But it's, if they get hit by a car, we're just going to die of a, a heart attack right away. You never know. Oh, that, like as if our souls were divided at birth? Yeah, <laughs> like there's some, someone in Indonesia is like my, my, uh, my opposite copy. And it could happen. Yeah, I mean, well, you got to take care of yourself in that case. Well, you'd think that there's like a guy in Indonesia now who like slept on his glasses and they're constantly slipping <laughs> off his head as we speak. <laughs> on the opposite side, <laughs> yeah. They broke the left arm of their glasses. Yeah, yes. like today, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like sliding off his face and his friends are making fun of him now too. Right, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, things caught, kind of, uh, like I said, after they left. So the... Uh, the Skeksis were not immediately evil. Uh, for whatever reason, Agra, like shortly after the division, just decided to trust them. They were like, listen, we're going to take we the, the sharp tooth, you know, like raggedy bird people. You can trust us. We will keep an eye on the crystal. 
you can use your astral projection to go teach people to build the pyramids and maybe find a solution to this problem. So Agra would return to, like, she's in this, um, God, I can't remember the term for it, but she is in this kind of laboratory in her house with a giant model of the solar system in it. Uh, so she's got, like, the rotating arcs with the little model planets on it, and that's where she does all her astral projecting. It looks like one of the, um, the Dwemer puzzle rooms in Skyrim. It does. Yeah, oh. yeah, I can't remember what it's actually called. There's a name for that machine. Or it's like an astrolabe or something like that. So there's a yeah. giant one in her house. And that's where she does her astral projection. She has woken up in the series and in the movie to be like, the Skeksis are up to no good politically, basically. All right. Um, right. Uh, then, but, but again, like things do actually get uh, pretty stable. The Gelfling come to the castle and were appointed as knights and guards. So a lot of the soldiers, like I was saying, in the Crystal Castle are Gelflings. Smaller kingdoms were allowed to rise, and everything was pretty much business as usual because the Skeksis were trusted eventually. But that is, like, it's funny. It's, it's much closer to real real world, like, political evil opposed to, like, fantasy, you know, like, tented fingers, scheming evil. Okay. They're they're so realistically evil that everybody just believes, like, no, oh, I trust them. They're in charge, obviously. <laughs> right? They wouldn't be yeah. in charge if they were fucking evil, right? Yeah. <laughs> that sort of thing. Right. Um, people started to ask some questions because it was during this time where the Grunak were hunted to extinction, other than the two slaves that are enslaved actually by the um, <laughs> the Skeksis scientist named Skektek. And I was just like, uh. damn, that dude enslaved these two monsters to like make tiny skateboards for the king or whatever. <laughs> so, a lot of the a lot of the uh, Skeksis names are like Skek and then a kind of a pawn on what they do. I can't remember all their all their names, but the scientist one who was experimenting on the darkening crystal and using it to drain the life essence out of the other races of Thra to extend the lives of the Emperor and the other Skeksis is Skektek, basically. Cool. Gosh. Which is great. Um, but yeah, so it's just like, why are people disappearing? Why were the Grunak being hunted? How come there are so many giant beetle man, you know, like patrols out? I can't remember the name of the race that they use, but they use the DNA of the slaughtered Grunax, as well as, like, the, like, bug army that they already have to create their, their like, primary bodyguards. Uh, in the film, they're, like, kind of these giant hunched-over, uh, like, kind of crab monsters that is, like, their main fighting force. They look like the Mirelurks from Fallout 4, like a semi-upright dome crab with a bunch of legs at the bottom, basically. Okay. Right. They destroy Agra's house at one point and like capture her and bring her to the uh, Skeksis Council. And she's just like, why'd you send? She calls her like her their crab men as like a derogatory term, too, which is pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> Ethan, did you say rad on purpose because radiation or? I didn't. No. OK. No. Cool. Nice. <laughs> nice. No <problem>. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, a lot of the and the other thing that is also happening is the pursuit of immortality like comes at a cost. Like, yes, it does kill everything they drain the essence out of. But over the course of the show, uh, which sadly has been canceled, so there won't be any resolution, you can wah, see that wah. the Emperor of the Skeksis is, like, rotting from the inside out. So he's putting on more and more elaborate jewelry to hide, like, the like purple pus that, that is, like, seeping out of him. I think some of his fingers just fucking break off because he's, like, necrotic from, yeah. like, <laughs> absorbing the souls. He's got but, gangrene. Yeah. Gangrene of the soul. Yeah. Uh -huh. And there's a, there's a really cool conversation where he's talking to uh, the general of the Skeksis. Uh, and he's talking, he's just like, ever since we started draining the essence out of people, I haven't had a single dream, nothing but nightmares. I'm like, oh man, the show is so <laughs> fucking good. And it makes me really sad that it was canceled. Yeah. But um, yeah, that is the prehistory or the the history of Thra and the Dark Crystal leading up to when the show begins. The show is a prequel. Um, and one of the one of the things about it being canceled is it was it's a fairly dark show, but it's canonically going to get a lot darker. Most of the protagonist cast are Gelflings. But by the movie, Jen thinks he's the last one last because one, the yeah. Skeksis right. have gone through and slaughtered them all. So we don't get like our genocidal puppet war Netflix series, <laughs> which like with the production values would have been fucking insane. But like, can you imagine how fucking bleak that show could have gotten? Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I loved it. Um, I've been your host, Peter O'Donoghue. You can find me at Lore Boys Podcast on Instagram for all of your puppet needs. Um, yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for downloading. Thanks for sharing. Uh, fellas, what's, uh, what's up? Uh, uh, get in the dick sword. Get in the Discord. There's a link in the description of this episode. Uh, or it's discord.com <laughs> slash 
Discord.gg slash Discord. Discord. Sorry, I'm never going to get it right. Um, (laughs) If only we could do it like the Google domains and just buy both. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, hop in there. Uh, join the conversation. Say hi to us. Uh, if you're a patron, you can ask us anything uh, in the patron AMA chat. You can play the loser titles game that Jamie uh, bewilderingly mentioned uh, <laughs> at uh, some point in this episode. Yeah, um, and that's all in the Discord. So hi. Yeah. The link. You can also, <laughs> if you feel like it, um, I did set up a subreddit about a year ago, and it finally just got traction in the last couple of weeks. We have like 20 people in there or something. Yeah, but... now that Reddit's dying. We yeah. were, we're hopping on, we're hopping on, on the yeah. Reddit. Right? Yeah. So you go on r slash the lore boys uh, if you want to get in on the conversation there. There's only two posts from the community. So you can be the official third post if you rush There's in there. Two posts from the community because we're standing in solidarity and we're, we're, we blacked out the sub, right? Right. So, yeah. Yes. 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 Um, something with the API, right? Yeah, third party anyway. apps. No, that's not about Whatever. It's yeah, yeah, that's uh, a long story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you guys like the show uh, and you want to support it, you can leave us a review or or tell your friends. It's the only way the show grows, uh, and you might just get somebody else interested in hearing about uh, puppet lore, where we inexpl- inexplicably t- tangent about other things throughout. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's uh, that's that'd be great. That'd be great. We'd appreciate it if you want to support the show financially. We do have a Patreon, patreoncom slash boys uh, where you can kick us a couple bucks a month, as little as three dollars a month, I think, is our, our intro tier, which gets you access to yeah. most of the patron level. Uh, a buck a boy, a buck a boy, we call it. Um, and that's USD, so it's more in Canadian. I think it's four dollars and fifty cents in Canadian. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, I don't remember what the the one patron who pays in Hungarian. <laughs> <laughs> I was just is. thinking of it. Yeah. it was dark side, dark <laughs> side, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's dark side. Dark uh, side, our, thousand Hungarian dollars or whatever the yeah. conversion is. Yeah. Also, our biggest patron over time. So thank you, Dark Side. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we don't have, we don't have to draw comparisons. Uh, any any little amount you can chip in is super 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 yep. super super yep. appreciated. Yep. Of course, any, anybody who doesn't want to be uh, belittled by Jamie uh, and his comparisons <laughs> uh, and doesn't trust Patreon can always uh, join Lower Boys Prime. Uh, we of course uh, always are, are hard at work to create some exciting incentives for you guys over the Lower Boys Prime prime department um we did receive a missive from a space lady uh she showed <laughs> up it was the the three boob lady from uh the fifth element okay she showed up via oh, astral good, projection yeah. uh shared some pyramids with us and uh basically we need you guys to uh, we're gonna send you some crystals we need you to dump some of your essence into them and i mean probably get a friend or something to ship them back i don't you'll probably won't have the strength to ship post them back yourself um right. but we'll send you some labels uh and don't don't worry about you know our fingers breaking off in future episodes or the, or the purple <laughs> pulse or anything like that we'll, three, we'll boob, three boob lady uh we'll talk about a great conjunction huh <laughs> 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 jamie's already falling apart it's the 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 consequences of drinking the essence that is why his yeah exactly uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. uh, i think that would cost you more boys more boys, boys. Uh, uh, uh.